We in welcoming our next and final speaker of the evening, Pamela Parker. <laughs> Cousin Debbie. Good evening to everyone, and I would like to thank um, Dr. Matthew Levitt, the Royal Museum of Alberta, the Royal Alberta Museum, Monique and Chris for inviting us this evening. This is the first of many events to celebrate our black history. This is history in the making starting now. My name is Janetta Gail Pamela. Leffler Parker. Try to put that on a passport. <laughs> I come from the Johnson Lefflers of Wildwood Pioneers. How many of you here tonight are some of the descendants of the Black Settlers? Let's see. We'll come. There's a few here. Thank you. My great grandfather, Frank Johnson, was born in 1880 in Texas. He's my great grandfather and he's Debbie's grandfather. Um, there's a photo of a slide in here that shows him in 1915 in California, just before he made his way up to Alberta. My grandmother, Roberta, my great-grandmother, Roberta Johnson, is who he married, and they had seven children. One of them was my great, my grandfather, George Johnson, and uh, he married Francis Johnson. They had my mother, Connie, that was my grandma, 1915. Uh, my mother was Connie Johnson Hannah, and she married Ermin Leffler. Ermin was my father, and Ermin's father was Frank Leffler. So my family's been here for a very long time, since the early 1900s. You know, sometimes people say to me now, Pamela, where are you from? I go, Edmonton. They go, no, no, where are you from? And I go, Edmonton. And they go, no, 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 where's your mom from? I go, Edmonton. And they go, no, 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 where were you born? I mean, where, where are you from? And I go, well, and this is how my story began. I'm from Edmonton. <laughs> I am Canadian. So I remember going to, every weekend we go to the family farm, and they grew almost everything there. We ate off the land, the meat, the vegetables, the fruit. We worked together as a group. My mom was one of 13 or 12 children, I'm not sure, I can't remember. But everybody pitched in and did their job. There's always five or six pies going in the oven at the same time on that little house. There's actually the family farm is still there in Wildwood. And there's a photo. There's Grandpa walking down the street. Yeah, they used to take photos of you walking down the street. <laughs> and sell it to you. <laughs> I grew up in the west end of Edmonton, and uh, it was like almost the last block in Edmonton, 163rd Street. There was a wolf out there in a graveyard, and CFRN was way, way out in the country, you know, was like way out there. Now you can see it from downtown. My brothers went to a different school than I did, but I went to Glendale Elementary. I was the only black in my elementary. When I went to West, I'm hey. My junior high teacher's here. Hi, Mr. Kirschmeyer. <laughs> uh, West, I went to West Lawn, and there was three blacks in my school. And then I went to Jasper Place Composite High School. Oh, guess what? We had five blacks out of 2,300 people. And that's even with the Rolling Miles kids living across the street. <laughs> well, needless to say, our folks haven't seen each other in, in town because we're all spread out all over the city all over the province, all over the country, or still back on the farm. The only time we get together was when we go to church. We had a great church. I love child Baptist. Or we go to a family picnic, an amazing family picnic, Borden, Borden Park, and then we bring food and we have so much fun. Or a wedding or a funeral. That's when we got together. Did you know back when I was eight years old, Black and white television was just going out of style. And color television was just coming in. So when I was eight years old, we got our first color TV. And speaking of color, 
if you look at it black and white, there wasn't very many colored people on TV at the time. I think there was only three of them, like Sidney Poitier, Cosby, Bill Cosby, and the Jacksons. That's, some people would say, are you part of the Jacksons? Because I was the first black person most of the people I ever met. They said, oh, you're the first black person I ever met. That happened to me a lot when I was growing up. Okay, So, um, being a tall black woman, I am proud to say that I am one of Alberta's first black families. I'm very proud of that. So, you can't imagine how many times in my life that I walked into a room and I was the only black person. And how do you think that made me feel? Awesome! <laughs> I was unique. I walk in a room and like, do you think I've noticed? I was noticed, I think so. So I just took full advantage of that and um, I'm special and you're special and everyone is special. And we all have history and we're making history this evening. When I was younger, I won a contest to go to New York City and I went to Detroit. And I was like, where do all these black people come from? I'd never seen a whole bunch of black people in one place before. And I was kind of, I was wondering what, what was going on there. And then I moved to New York City and there was people living on the street. When I left Edmonton, it was very wealthy. The oil business was huge. And I, I'm just gonna finish by saying, I was so worried about all the poor black people that I called my auntie, Velma Carter, and I said, Auntie, everybody's poor here and they're sleeping on the street and the black people are just sad. What can I do? How can I help them? And she said something that I would like to share with you and I hope that you will all do it as well. And that is, everybody should just stand tall and be a good example. I think that's very important. I don't know what more you can do to share your confidence. And one more thing I want to say is my great grandpa Johnson, Frank Johnson, he um, used to say, I wish people would come and visit me more often. So the lesson of my little talk here today is one, stand up straight and be confident and be a good example and listen to your elders because that's how you make history. I brought a couple of artifacts with me this evening. The first one is the cream can. Here we go. Uh, my grandma, Frances Johnson, painted this. She, um, my grandpa used, George, used to go out and find, he'd always find things and then try to fix them. And just, he'd pound it out the inside and painted it, and my grandma would paint it. Uh, this is my piggy bank. It's pretty big. There's only a loony in it right now. But, <laughs> It's a piggy bank, and there's little pigs on the side. That was the handle. And uh, she painted a fall scenery on one side, and the summer scenery on the other side. And there's lots of little details if you want to come and take a look at it. I also brought with me an old church hymnal. This is from uh, Shia Baptist Church. And I remember, I used to memorize my favorite members of my song, my favorite songs, uh, the number of the page that they were on. And let me see, wrong page. <laughs> and so, I said, is this a song again? Okay. okay. Um, so I would like everybody to join me, please. Uh, Debbie and Laura and Chris would like to join me, please. And uh, we're just going to end by singing the song. I hope that you know it. If you don't know it, the lyrics are here. Come on. Please join me. I'm not doing this one myself. <laughs> Okay, so we, if you'd like to join in, this is Amazing Grace. It just fell open on this page, and so I thought it was appropriate to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please join us, everyone. Ready? I've got a four. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. What was blind? Whoa. 